Are you a small company having a hard time accelerating your products and services? Are you finding that you're not building the business relationships that are needed to become really successful? And do you have that yearning to start local and become a global concern in the industry of entrepreneurship? Today on Keep Alive, I'm going to talk to you about an organization that can do just that for you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm William Lee, podcaster and your host today on Keep Alive. We're going to talk today about something I think is very, very interesting and exciting. If you're a new entrepreneur or somebody is talking about starting a business, where do you start? Well, everybody says I run down to the tax office and I sign some paperwork. I hope I did it right. Then I run over to grab my product line or study a little bit about the services or product that I want to sell. And then, of course, you know, I got to get the stationery and the office and the logo and the list goes on and on and on. Now, a lot of businesses start out this way and usually within two to five years disappear. Why? Because they don't have the fundamentals to make the company work. It's as simple as that. They have the drive and the love and the persistency to focus on success, but they don't really realize the planning that it takes to become successful. Candace Thompson, founder of the Wild Child Group, has the answers for us. But before we talk about the Wild Child Group today, let's get into the Wayback Machine and slip back about three and a half, four years ago when I personally first met Candace Thompson and watched the group grow. It was very interesting to me because our first actual, shall we say, meeting occurred at a business networking meeting that Candace had designed to put small businesses in a situation where they could build relationships, where they can actually learn how to gain important tools to make their company successful. At the meeting, which there wasn't too many people at to come to think about it, uh, was held at the Pialp Library. It was at six o'clock at night. I, I thought, well, what the heck, I'll go. So I sat down and listened to the group as they started laying out what the group was all about, what networking was all about, their goals and mission statement. Well, it, was, it sounded pretty good. I'd been involved in a business group uh, before, networking group, and it sounded pretty good deal. So I thought, well, hey, I can come once a week to this and still maintain my relationship with my other group. In the middle of the procedure, naturally, in any networking group, they have a special guest that speaks. And tonight was a night that opened my eyes and made a change in my life in the business sense of building my business. This young lady stepped into the room with uh, a smile that was absolutely incredible, with an attitude of positive business knowledge. And she really did speak our terms in our language that we understood. In fact, it was kind of interesting because she had this this popcorn speech thing that she puts together. What's a popcorn speech? Well, she hands out a slip of paper to everyone with different topics concerning business. She said, I'll pick a topic, speak for two minutes, and you pick a topic, and I'll speak on it for two minutes, and we'll go through the list. The list was very well planned out on key things that entrepreneurs or small businesses really needed to study up on because it was so important to make your business work and work properly. And the first thing that caught me is the fact that she delivered this with such enthusiasm, a big, big positive note that small business can survive if small business has the tools to do so. She talked about business entrepreneurship. She talked a little bit about the history of how she gained all this information and some of her schooling and knowledge. And the key point to all of what she had to say that night that grabbed me and made a change in my business attitude was, quote, you don't need a big pile of money to go from local to global or even to become a success success. What you need is knowledge, tools, and, and a very important part, vision, 
to build revenue streams to make your company from global to internationally global. So I, I, I thought about all these words, global and local and all that, and I kind of let that pass because in my mind, I hadn't adjusted to the fact that I needed somebody to help me out understand business. Now, it's not that I had not been around business. I'd been around business since I started right out of high school over 50 years ago. And I'd seen, oh, so many changes in marketing and branding and things of this nature that I'd kind of slipped back about 20 years. You know what I mean? Well, okay, what do I mean by 20 years? It's kind of simple. We were back in the printed days. That was the big thing. The feet on the pavement, the radio, the television. I wasn't into the new age of computers and what social media could do and what branding and how important it was for visual branding. I had no idea about these things whatsoever. My thought was you put your feet on the pavement, you knock on the door and somebody says yes. Boy, the world had changed, I found out that night. After the meeting was over with, I said to myself, I, I've got to interview this gal. I want to understand what's going on in the world of business. And the only way I'm going to be able to do that is to have a one-to-one. -one. So I got up the fortitude. I called her. I said, could we get together and just talk a little bit about business and a little bit about how my business needs, I think, a, a completely new facelift. It's something, something's just not right. I'm not feeling the love and warmth of being an entrepreneur and that drive after listening to all the wonderful things that you were talking about that obviously I wasn't doing or understood. So we started the meeting at nine o'clock at Panera Breads in South Hill. By two o'clock, by two o'clock, mind you, we had covered just about everything in business from each of our actual business relationships with the companies in Puyallup area, the history of us in Puyallup, uh, I was so excited to find out that she was a Puyallup citizen way back when. I mean, she wasn't a foreigner that had come in out of Seattle or Washington, D.C. or the East Coast. I mean, she was actually from Puyallup. And what a surprise that was to me. The way she came through was absolutely extraordinary. And I thought to myself, this is like like going in, in to Alaska during the gold rush and and staking a claim and hitting the mother load. That's what it felt like. Her ideas were fantastic. She invited me to come to one of her classes to listen to what she had to say and how she presented her material. Now, it was the best thing I'd ever done in the business sense of learning more about business. And what really excited me was the fact that everything that this woman was talking about could be obtained without having a truckload of money to get things started. She started right at the basics of what companies are all about. She talked about the theory of entrepreneurship. Then she would step it up and step it up into different things such as marketing and how to do it right. She would show us different ideas on business relationship, how to size up a client, how to fill a client's needs, how to build a program. She talked to us about the small, what I call the small, simple things that build a firm foundation that can take you from a local business and put you into a global market. That was exciting to me. Well, I got to the point where as I made more than just that one class, I signed up and she taught many subjects that I couldn't even fit into this podcast. But it was interesting to me one facet, the people that were in that room, how much they gained through experimentations, through simple things in the classroom, examples that she used. It was, it was imperative to see them grow, to see them get excited, to understand once again that entrepreneurship was business, and business is obtainable if you use the tools and learn. Well, that was three and a half, four years ago. And I'm very proud to say that I have had a strong business relationship with the Wild Child Group and the founder, Candace Thompson, ever since that first day I met her. It, it was imperative in my mind that I wanted to become a part of what her organization was all about and have been proud to do so for the last few years. Now the big push is on. The big push is on bigger and better than ever because now we want to rebuild America. We want to rebuild the actual economy in America. And 
let's be real about all of this. And I don't want you to take a political view on this. I want you to think real, real reality. Everything that we have done in this country has started by a conversation, simply around a table, maybe at a, at a home or at a restaurant or at a business meeting in a conference room. It all starts with communication. It all starts with developing an idea expressing thoughts, and dreaming. That's what it all starts with. And once that's completed, then you can take and build action and continue with that simple conversation while the action grows your ideas and theories. And companies from small companies can grow. Or maybe the gentleman that's sitting across from you who has thought about for years opening up a a specialty store for books or whatever, can now have the tools through conversation and through more conversations as time goes by to build that bookstore into quite a bookstore, a from local to global bookstore. But what really sparks you is the fact that you can find people that can counsel you to make that dream of yours actually happen. Now, I'm not talking about the flies on the wall, the guys that have all the answers. They're so smart, they can't run a business. They're so smart that they have figured out how to get into your pocketbook through wonderful, wonderful lectures and and Sophie pictures. Oh, wait a minute, selfie. Or the goofy pictures on your phone of them hugging you, of the enthusiasm and the spirit that they can give you, simply if you'll write them a check for $50 million or $500 or whatever to buy their books and their pamphlets, and the next time they come to town to be able to participate in a dinner with them or whatever. Boy, the day of the medicine show I thought was over in the 1800s, but now the internet is given the medicine show a real new outlook because now they can go worldwide while they sit in their humble humble apartment or mansion that people have built through buying information that really isn't the information and can move on. It's exciting. Candace Thompson and the Wild Child Group didn't qualify. I'm sorry to say this. It was really a letdown. They didn't qualify in the sharks, con people, money scamming. Uh, they didn't They didn't make it in the click farms for social media. They didn't make it in a whole bunch of areas which seem to be a billion-dollar industry. You know, they just didn't make it. So Candace, naturally, kept on moving forward, as she has always done, by telling you about clarity, about honesty, credibility, authenticity, all of these factors that she pounds in as she builds your company with different revenue uh, streams, different product ideas, and educates you on the business principles of today, the real business principles. It's interesting and incredible, isn't it? Now you probably say, well, that's great for, oh, you know, the startup guy. Yeah, that'd be cool. But, uh, you know, I got a company going and, man. Eh, cutting a couple hundred thousand a year. Why would I need to talk to somebody that could accelerate my business, somebody that could build more strategy into my company and help me see that with boots on the ground and knowledge, I can actually build my company. Not having boots in somebody's wealthy mansion closet draining my checking account with a bunch of hogwash. That's interesting, isn't it? She has actually combined her knowledge with hand-picked individuals in the business world from web designers to uh, content writers to uh, wonderful web design. All of these neat things that we need, all these tools that we need, even looking and growing into the podcasting world. It's incredible what she's done and where and how she's helped people. Now, I'm not talking about local people. I'm talking about people all over the United States. Candace is, without a doubt, a beautiful diamond in a chunk of coal. And once you get that chunk of coal, once you discover that diamond, your business is going to go from local to global for sure. So, I want you to take a time, if you're a small business, a medium-sized business, or a billion-dollar business, 
I want you to go.